Today is Monday, February 5th, 2018. And welcome to Van Ran 10 on sports. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Super Bowl necessarily because I feel like a lot of people have talked about it, so you've probably seen everything you're going to see on the Super Bowl. So I decided to talk about a different topic. What if Bill Belichick didn't win the lottery? What if he didn't win the Powerball? What if he didn't make that magical pick in the sixth round in the 2000 NFL draft that landed him Tom Brady? What if he didn't make that pick? So this is all hypothetical. Too many people are saying that Bill Belichick is the greatest quarterback of all time. And a lot of people have been arguing whether or not it's Bill Belichick or Tom Brady that's really responsible for the success of the New England Patriots. I will argue all day long that it's Tom Brady that's responsible for the success of the New England Patriots over the year. And that Tom Brady could have pretty much ended up anywhere and had this kind of success with just a competent coach. So we're going to analyze a little bit about what actually happened here. In the sixth round, when you pick a quarterback, you're not looking for a future Hall of Famer. When you pick a quarterback in the sixth round, you're looking for a guy you can develop. Or you're looking for a guy that can be a competent backup to your starter. You're not looking at a sixth round pick quarterback to be the future greatest quarterback of all time. You're not even looking for him to be a Hall of Famer. You're just looking for a guy that can make a few plays, maybe someday start for your team. He's going to be a project. You're going to work on him maybe four years down the road. He ends up being a starter, and he's competent, and then you put the next guy in when you find somebody better. Not, I can't think of a lot of Hall of Fame quarterbacks. That, I can't think of any Hall of Fame quarterback that came out of the sixth round other than Tom Brady, because Tom Brady will make the Hall of Fame easy. Um, but most of your best quarterbacks are taken in the first round. John Elway, first-round pick. Peyton Manning, first-round pick. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, first-round pick. You know, uh, Cam Newton's a first-round pick. Aaron Rodgers is a first-round pick. These are, you know, these are guys that are taken high in the draft for a reason. They were thought to be franchise quarterbacks. When you take a guy in the sixth round, you're not expecting much out of them. When you take a guy in the sixth round, you're looking for a backup. You're looking for a project that you can maybe turn something in, turn them into something. But you're not looking to turn them into a Hall of Famer. You're looking to turn them into a serviceable NFL player. You're not looking to sit there and go, that guy I took in the sixth round, Hall of Famer, guarantee it. No, when they picked him in the sixth round, it was, we need to see if we can find a backup to Bledsoe and maybe a guy that can take over for Bledsoe in the future. And then, you know, if we have to, we'll draft other players and maybe another quarterback next year. We don't know. Bledsoe's the guy, though. So Tom Brady was taken with the 199th pick in the sixth round. The 199th pick was a compensatory pick. Now, anybody that doesn't know what a compensatory pick is, is it usually means that you lost a free agent to another team that was kind of a restricted free agent. You lost that free agent. It might have been, I, 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 I don't know all the exact rules on how you get compensatory picks, so don't quote me on any of this. But a compensatory pick is a pick they put at the end of the round. So if you had a player that the NFL deems as, well, that player that you lost was worth a sixth-round pick, they'll give you an extra sixth-round pick. So, in essence, they gave the Patriots an extra sixth-round pick for probably a free agent they lost the year before. Now, Bill Belichick started coaching in 2000 for the Patriots. He was the general manager right from the start. So he made this pick. He did make that pick. But I guarantee you he wasn't thinking, Tom Brady's going to be the greatest quarterback of all time. Tom Brady's a future Hall of Famer. Tom Brady's going to lead my team to Super Bowls. No, he was looking for a guy that he could turn into something maybe and have a backup for Drew Bledsoe. That's essentially what he was looking at for a, a sixth-round pick quarterback. Now, there was another quarterback taken in that same draft that went oh, 13 picks behind Tom Brady. His name was Tim Rattay. He was drafted by the San Francisco 49ers at the 212th pick in the seventh round. So, when you look at Tim Rattay, he actually started a few games for the San Francisco 49ers. But the New England Patriots 
were actually interested in Tim Rattay. They showed some amount of they might draft him. So what if the New England Patriots draft Tim Rattay? What if Tim Rattay slides down to the 49ers and the 49ers just sit there and go, ah, let's, let's take the kid out of Michigan, Brady. It changes the entire landscape. Now instead of getting the greatest quarterback of all time, you've got Tim Rattay. You don't have Tom Brady. You don't have the guy that's going to turn into the greatest quarterback of all time. You have Tim Rattay. Tim Rattay. I think in his career he threw 34 touchdowns, 21 interceptions. Not a bad touchdown-interception ratio, but he, that's not Tom Brady. So what if he? What if he doesn't? What if? What if he takes? What if uh, Belichick takes one of the other quarterbacks that went after? Jarius Jackson went with the 214th pick to the Denver Broncos out of Notre Dame. Jarius Jackson was considered a project as well. There were people that thought Jarius Jackson could be a good NFL quarterback. He just needed to get the right coaching. Um, Jarius Jackson was, I think, a scrambling quarterback. Wasn't really a quarterback. He was more of a Tebow type. Better throwing motion, of course. But he played for like four years for Denver and never really amounted to much of anything. Then there was also two other compensatory picks that were made that were quarterbacks. At 202, Todd Husack went to the Washington Redskins out of Stanford. Never did anything in the NFL. I think he he had no touchdowns, no interceptions, and threw for negative two yards in his career. Holy smokes, that's bad. And then there was another guy named Juwan Cedar that went to the San Diego Chargers out of Florida A&M with the 205th pick, also a compensatory pick. So these guys are all in the same boat. They all have a 6th or 7th round grade like Tom Brady had. So if Tom Brady doesn't get picked by Bill Belichick, if Bill Belichick doesn't win the lottery. Now I know what you're saying. Well, maybe it was Bill Belichick that developed Brady. What did Bill Belichick do with Castle? Sure, he was good. It's like Castle was 11-5 and on a 16-0 and team the previous year. Because remember... Those New England Patriots were 16 and 0 the previous year and they went 11 and 5 the next season with Cassell when Brady was hurt the whole year. 11 and 5. Remember, that's five more losses than they had the previous season. If they would have been 13 and 3, they would have been 8 and 8. And they and at 11 and 5, they still didn't make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs that season because they lost this bunch of the tiebreakers that kept them out of the playoffs. If that's Tom Brady on that team, you're probably going 15 and one. I don't think you're going 16 and 0 again. It's too tough to do it even once, let alone two times in a row. But they lost five more games than they did the previous season, and they didn't make the playoffs. Then when Matt Cassell went to, or Castle, however you want to pronounce it, went to another team, what did he do? Tell me how great Matt Cassell was on all the other teams he ever played for. He did nothing. What about Ryan Mallett? Ryan Mallett never did anything. Now. Garoppolo, Garoppolo looks pretty good. And even um, Jacoby Brissett that went to New England or went to Indianapolis, he had some moments where he looked pretty good and then he had a lot of bad moments as well. But Garoppolo looked good. for I'll, I'll give you that. Garoppolo looked really good, but he was a second-round pick. Uh, but Garoppolo did. He looked fantastic for the Niners, and the Niners would be stupid to let him go at this point. Um, but Jacoby Brissett might just be an average quarterback at this point, but Ryan Mallett never did anything, and we all know that Castle didn't do much of anything either. So there it, therein lies uh, some of the problems. It's not like he's a great developer of quarterbacks, and every quarterback that's ever come through there has been a great quarterback. Uh, you know, what was it, Brian, I don't know, Brian Boyer, or Brian, I can't remember what his name is, he didn't go on to be a great quarterback. He was a backup to Tom Brady there. He didn't go on to be a great quarterback. So if the if the Patriots don't take Tom Brady, they end up with maybe Tim Rattay, who they were interested in. The Patriots don't have this. Maybe the San Francisco 49ers don't have it because they don't know how to develop Brady. Maybe Brady developed under Charlie Weiss. Maybe Charlie Weiss really deserves most of the credit for Brady. I, I don't know. I didn't research deep enough to find out Charlie Weiss was the initial uh, offensive coordinator. Um, but who's to say that Bill Belichick would be where he is? 
People call him one of the greatest coaches. People call him the greatest coach of all time. How do you know? A lot of the stuff he does, nobody else does. You know why? Because they don't have Tom Brady. I get rid of a player a year too early rather than a year too late. You're the only guy that does that. Nobody else does that. Because you want to use, it's like most teams, if they have another great year with that player, they want to keep them for another year. And maybe they get two years out of them. So they want to keep them for both years. But, you know, Bill Check does things differently. The reason the Patriot way works is because you have Tom Brady. If you don't have Tom Brady, the Patriot way doesn't work. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. All these things that they say about the Patriot way work because you have Tom Brady. You have the greatest quarterback of all time. You could have put just about any coach with Michael Jordan and you would have succeeded. If Michael Jordan liked Doug Collins, we might be talking about Doug Collins as the greatest uh, coach of all time in, in basketball. But... Michael Jordan didn't like him, so they got rid of him. Now, let's look at, uh, you know, even, uh, let's, uh, let's look at Bill Belichick as a coach, and they say he's one of the greatest coaches of all time, so let's look at some of his other coaches that have coached in the NFL. Romeo Cornell, coached in Cleveland and Kansas City, bust. Al Groh, coached for the Jets, bust. Josh McDaniels, coached for the Broncos, bust. Mangini, coach for the Jets, had a good season, but ultimately ends up a bust. Nick Saban for the Dolphins, terrible. Greatest damn coach you're ever going to see in college, I believe that. But in the NFL, he was terrible. Jim Schwartz for the Lions, bust. Bill O'Brien for the Texans, still too early to tell. Maybe if he doesn't lose his quarterback, uh, Deshaun Watson, he might have a better season, and Bill O'Brien seems to be liked by a lot of his players and other his peers, so he might still turn out to be somebody. And then you got Matt Patricia going to the Lions. We don't know. Uh, we, I have no idea what he's going to be. He hasn't even coached yet uh, as a head coach. But to me, it's Tom Brady. If you have Tom Brady, you're probably going to get put up there in the upper echelon of coaches. Bill Belichick won the lottery in the year 2000, and he's been riding it ever since. Every decision he makes works because Tom Brady makes you look like a genius. Tom Brady executes your game plan better than anybody. Tom Brady puts the ball right in the receiver's hands. Tom Brady reads the defenses. Tom Brady knows what to do and when to do it. He's the one with the drive, the determination, and the heart, and the passion. It's Tom Brady. Without Tom Brady... Bill Belichick is just another coach. I'm sorry, if Bill Belichick drafts Tim Rattay, who he was interested in, instead of drafting Tom Brady, the New England Patriots don't do what we've seen them do. But they did it because of Tom Brady. So if you're ever thinking who is really responsible, it's Tom Brady. Bar none. So we saw last night, or you know, we saw in that Super Bowl, that Bra that uh, Belichick got outcoached. He really did. Doug, uh, Doug Peterson outcoached him. A guy that uh, has a minuscule amount of head coaching experience outcoached him. He did something Belichick never thought he could do, and that's keep his foot on the throttle and said, I'm just going to go for it. You stop me if you can. Belichick's defense gave up, what, over 500 yards of total offense? Tom Brady had to throw for over 500 yards just to keep them in the game. Not for Tom Brady. The Philadelphia Eagles might win that game 41-10. to 10. So, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not saying Bill Belichick's a bad coach. He's just not the greatest coach of all time. Sometimes coaches are made by their players, and I believe that Bill Belichick was made by Tom Brady. If you don't have Tom Brady... You don't get to be the greatest of all time. Tom Brady is the greatest of all time, so Bill Belichick will be viewed as the greatest of all time. Without Tom Brady, Bill Belichick is just another coach. Look at his record in Cleveland. One winning season, he was okay. But with all that being said, to the troops, past, present, and future, thanks for the freedom.